I had made a decision to invest in property and I knew that I needed to take action right away. Hello and welcome. So I've got John Noble with us at the moment and Adam's here too. John is a client of ours. Welcome. Hello. This is a very rare opportunity for us getting a client into our offices. Lots of our clients live a long way away and it's an effort. So thank you for traveling here. It's our opportunity to review and go through and talk about John's experience as a, a handhold client. We have found, fixed and rented. How many properties? Uh -huh. have you How many? Oh, go on. Do you oh, know? I, don't, I don't know. John, uh, five at yeah, 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 the moment. Yeah. So um, portfolio it, landlord. No. This is also yeah. going to be a bit, a bit of an insight into our business. I'm sure lots of people, it's a question we kind of get asked when we meet would-be clients. Why do I do this? What's my role? How involved am I? And so you kind of get a little bit of the answers to that in today's video because um, the answer is I run for the landlords as a, as a business, it's my business. All of the things that go on, they've all got somebody in, in charge of them. I, I do very little work inside the business. Adam looks after handhold, so he's got all the answers. Why do I do it? Why do I run this? <laughs> okay. um, I get the benefit. So in the same way you bought your houses, John, it's the way I buy my houses. I couldn't name your five houses. I couldn't name my last five houses off the top of my head because I bought them in the same way as, as, as um, John's bought them via Adam. He's sorted my houses out and uh, they've been added to my portfolio. So that's why I do this. Sometimes people think, oh, hang on a minute. If, if it's so good, Jess, why aren't you buying all the houses? One, I can't afford to buy all the houses. And two, it's better with everybody involved. I mean, I couldn't have an Adam and you know, all the people behind Adam, all the finders, the fixers and the renters, if it was just me, I'd have to have a little piece of the person or do a lot of the work myself. So Handhold is the service we offer for the landlord's offer where we will find, fix and rent a property for a client. John is a client, he's been through the process. And so this is going to be a warts and all, by the way, we've briefed you to hold nothing back. It's got to be exactly as Complete it really Complete transparency. Absolutely. I'm expecting <laughs> there'll, be yeah. some, there'll be some bumps along the road. Five houses. Can't there, always, there always is. There mm -hmm. always is. It can't be perfect. No. It, it, it's impossible. I know from my experience it just isn't but it's bloody good it just keeps going forward first question yeah where, where did you come across this job it's complete chance really so i was that's what you like yeah, yeah. He's working great. yeah no exactly i had made a decision to invest in property and i knew that i needed to take action right away before i just talked myself out of it and i was my parents live in nottingham so i came to nottingham i'm from london it's a little bit cheaper up here so i had that day been traveling around viewing properties and I didn't really know anything, but I knew that I needed to take action. So put in offers, best thing that ever happened was every single offer got declined because then I would have properties in a random area that I didn't really know much about, but I knew I, knew I needed to do something. I was walking by and I saw the for the landlord sign and I thought mm, this, is a sign, you know? <laughs> so I, I, call, yeah, I called the number and I didn't really know what you did because well, it said well, the for names, the landlord. The, the, the clues in the name, and yeah. that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it works. So I, the only person that's met us through walk, by walking past the office though. Yeah. Very few people do. But it's effective. Yeah. Um, so I called up and I asked some information. And at that point, I had no intention of refurbing anything because I didn't have the skill set. I knew that that's just an added layer of potential problems. So my idea was to find something, purchase it, work out what the problems were from that, because there's problems with every sort of investing, yeah. and then go from there. I called up. I don't know if I spoke to you. I spoke to somebody else. And they said, you are involved in dealing with potential clients mm -hmm. and then yeah I jumped on no you invited me to your house was that the first time you met I don't know if it's the first time I but you might have done the group call first you definitely came to my house it was two years ago so yeah the mid lockdown ish yeah. kind of yeah yeah yeah, yeah. makes a habit of seeing people at his house now because it's easy <laughs> you work from home often. not done it that many times but so yeah busy. we'll meet you wherever we need to meet my daughter was about two see. then and she was with us running about mm -hmm. my wife had to go out and do some run some errands or something so, yeah. you so we had a client one to one with a child watching an iPad and stuff. yeah yeah it's authentic <laughs> <laughs> so you met us it's a slightly unusual route but not that unusual I mean the fact you walked past the office I mean we've got one yeah. office in Nottingham and, and, and it's it's in the city centre, but on the edge of it, you, you did well yeah. to find Most us Most people find us here on YouTube. Yeah, but yeah. finding us, yeah, the same thing. And, and we also know that you saw a sign saying for the landlords.com, and we know that other landlords all want to be landlords if they see that sign, well, that wherever they see it, whether mm -hmm. it's actually on our office 
or on, on YouTube, that would be the natural thing. I mean, in fact, I, the, we've got plenty of strap lines that come underneath it. You know, one just says lettings and management, one says build your empire. Happy landlords, um, sorry, proud landlords, happy renters, <laughs> <and> renter communities. <laughs> but, the, but the actual thing we put up out there would be, um, are you a landlord, brackets, or want to be, call us or come, yeah. click the button or whatever. So you've, you came the normal route. Then a discovery call. Yes. Yeah. And then effectively a one-to-one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah and between awesome. those two, I dived into the YouTube because it's a big decision. So initially I wanted to just purchase a property with a deposit. It's a very different business model, buying a property, refurbing the property. And to make that decision, I needed to essentially build trust as much as I could do. And the easiest way to do that was watching all of the YouTube videos, every single one going back to the beginning. So when people watch this video... Yeah, but it's, 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 it's due diligence. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. due diligence. It wasn't... Yeah, it's due diligence. So I needed to know as much information as possible about who you are, who, who you are. I like that. Because people who... Makes you more engaged as a client as well. Yeah, 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 you have to be. Well, it's such a big decision. Not everyone's like that. Some people are so flippant. They, they might have watched one video, done the discovery course, go, oh, like, what have you got? Yeah. And, and that's sometimes fine. that scares me. That's fine yeah. if they do it with you guys, yeah. but there will be other people who only have three videos and they don't have the history. Well, that's nice of you to say that, you know, the, and, and I honestly believe that if, if a client goes through our process with Adam, it's never going to be perfect, but they're going to be well looked after. But still, when somebody says yes too quickly, so have you really taken on board what <laughs> it is that you're told about to you. do? Yeah. Because you, you, John, you came over with a, your eyes, eyes open. There's a lot of risk. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. I mean, we, we mitigate it as much as possible, but still, you're buying a house. It's an unknown quantity in lots of ways. We have surveys. We've, we've, we've had our own uh, look at the property. We've uh, come up with a schedule of works. We've done our absolute best. There's always going to be some surprises. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And then through the renovation period, you're looking at dealing with, with builders, suppliers, and again, the same, the same thing. We like to have a, a well-engaged client, and the more you've listened and learned, that, that, that helps. I think that's... How did you find the discovery call? I had already made the decision to invest, so that was kind of the final hurdle. For me, my due diligence was sitting at home watching all of the videos, yeah. doing as much research as possible. Yeah. And then you, then I made a decision because I don't want to go into the discovery call thinking, for some people that are maybe the first thing they do, this is my story. Um, but for me, I knew that I'm going ahead. I need to go ahead. I need to make a decision at some point to invest because I'm a new landlord. Very different if somebody's already knows what's going on with the, the industry, other ways of doing it, and then they want to outsource. For me, I thought, okay, yes or no, it's binary. I'm investing, is this a good decision? I will find out, let's limit the risk, let's do one project, let's see how it goes. That's me. Perfect, I mean, that, that makes total sense. And the discovery call works either end. You see it first and then go away, do your due, due diligence mm -hmm. or do some due diligence and, and, and then watch it. Or they can, can yeah. sit in the middle for some clients as well. But yeah. I think it's an important thing, we insist that every client we deal with we meet, in inverted commas, on that discovery call. And, and the follow-up ones, you have to have follow-up ones, with me. Yeah, just to check that you've, mm. you've got it. And yeah. um, it's a really proud moment for me, and, and I know you, you do it regularly, where it's effectively, I mean, Adam's calls himself a client relationship manager and a plant, he's a sales guy, yeah, mm -hmm. sales. When Adam turns business down, and he does, it's a proud moment for me when we can't take your money effectively because I don't think you've quite done that that, mm. that bit and that bit. Yeah. Go away, have a think about that, check into you that. You shouldn't still be asking sure, me this question sure, yeah, after yeah. all the conversations we've had. If you start asking me this question now, this is not the right thing. Yeah. And, and, and if you get halfway through, it will be a worry for that client, if it would be client, if you don't get that bit straight in your head first. So yeah, I think that's a good process. So. Tell us, where are you with your property journey now? You started with zero. We, we started uh, with zero. Um, um, where, where have you got to? So I came to you, I already had one. Mm -hmm. So that was in the pipeline and still in, an enigma. And then that was a very different model. So I purchased a property with a mortgage, also outsourced it, and that's in Leeds. And it needed a small refurb. Yeah. That went over budget. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, now I have six properties. Okay with you guys, yeah. and I have two refurbs going on. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's pretty seamless. So that so you've got three in management. Three, three, three in management. Two yeah. in renovation two, right two now. Two going. Mm -hmm. One's just starting its renovation, right? There's some progress yeah. made, yeah. Yeah, it's not, but it's early, yeah. early stages. Yeah. So yeah, cool. Okay, so how did you find the process? Should we outline the process first? So just for people who are watching yeah. who don't know the process, I've got 
property buyers out there, also contracts managers, and there's teams to rent houses out and manage them. So the handhold process handholds a client all the way through finding, fixing, renting, and then the ongoing management of, of a house. So that's effectively what you've been through yep. three times and you're still in the process of, of going through it. And it is different. You're, you, you bought another house before that was just, I'll buy a house off the shelf. Mm-hmm. Now, to explain the reason why we do this, why do we go through all this extra effort, if you still you know, come to a discovery call and, and work out for, sure for, for exactly the reasons why, but if we can buy a house relatively cheap for what it is, and you can do that if you bought a bit of a rundown house. You know, less people are involved, um, uh, wanting to buy a rundown house. The less people can, you know, it's, it's usually got to be bought in cash. Uh, and then if you can add some value by renovating it, we create a margin. We, we create a gap. If you were to sell that house on, flip it, you would make a profit, and that profit is essentially your deposit on your buy to let. So that's why we do what we do. So go on. How, how's it been? How, how's Adam done? Yeah, good. So each property is different. I don't mean each two, three bed. I mean each journey is different. So the first property, uh, which for me was the most important because that is, you're setting an example of what the future properties would be. I had no idea of the timeline to get it finished. I had no idea of the potential problems. Seamless. Purchased, refurbed, rented within three weeks and no, four weeks and it was Christmas time. Great. You know, second property took a little bit longer. However, the way the, the buying bit, the renovation bit. So no, oh, the buying is I think two or three months, which is yeah, it's okay. We aim for sort of six to eight weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes you're just in the hands of the vendor solicitor. It's really yeah. difficult. It's that that one is. We, yeah. we never like a how long is a piece of string thing. Uh-huh. Everything's got to have a KPI in it. Yeah, uh, and and our KPI for a purchase is is, is between four and six weeks. Yeah. yeah, but we've had to in the last year two years Mm -hmm. it's covid based we've Mm -hmm. had to extend that out and and that is the one piece of the process where we've struggled to you know we are at the mercy of the person selling it we can buy it in four weeks Mm -hmm. they usually can't sell it in four weeks yeah yeah yeah. it's getting better it is getting getting better better. yeah yeah. well that was just that property so the next property was very quick i just blinked and everything was done so with the second property there were unforeseen problems However, the way I look at it is if those problems had happened to myself, if I was doing it, it would still be in a refurb. <laughs> I'm still, obviously, I'm outsourcing, so I'm not saying you're off the hook. <laughs> but if I had done uh, that same procedure, oh, my God, I would mm. throw in the proverbial towel. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that was good. What were the specifics? What, 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 what were the problems? So there was a, a bereavement of a builder which is something nobody has any control over. I remember that, yeah. Yeah, and that's just, yeah, yeah. it could happen to anybody, so what do you do? Yeah. It wasn't um, the builder that died, it was a family member. Fa- yeah, yeah, sorry, the, yeah, the builder's still Yeah, but building. still knocked in for six and he, yeah. he went off a bit. Yeah, I think there was another, there was a problem getting tiles in because there was a very mm-hmm. specific brand and it came from Europe uh, or yeah, somewhere so else. Just, so, so, so tiles went bankrupt. These houses, was that, yeah? these houses were getting renovated after the COVID lockdown. 2020, 2021, there's been lots of mis- material sh- shortages in that time. Yep. That doesn't surprise me. Um, it's interesting you said that every house felt different. Yeah. You know, I mean, they're all basically a two or three bed little house, yeah? Mm-hmm. And you, you're absolutely right. It, it, there, there is every single stage, there's two or three things we know that we've got to focus on. The amount of time it takes to get a, 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 a contract out, the amount of time it takes to get a schedule of works going and the, the job going. The amount of time it takes to do the renovation and also an update every week. These are our KPIs I'm listing off. Yeah. These are the things that I would know. Mm-hmm. Um, and how long it then takes to rent. And if you get, is there an update every week? If you get those things right, then generally speaking, things are going right. So from my point of view, from a business owner's point of view, I look down a dashboard with those five columns and we mark them red or green. Okay. And I can scan down them all. And as long as they're all green, I know we're fine. Mm-hmm. But the way that each job feels for me personally when I am getting my updates, because I get the same, I get exactly the same updates as you got. Those, mm-hmm. and, and I'm, I insist on Adam sending them in the same format, and I get the little link to the video when you look through them. And yeah, sometimes it's, yeah, that, that bit's really quick, or that bit's really long. Um, sometimes a bit's got some hiccups, and sometimes it rents out really quickly, sometimes it falls through five times. They all are, can be very different, but essentially, once you've done lots of them, and you'll probably get to the point now where you'll start to repeat this. Oh, that one's like that one. That one's like that one. Yeah. You know, I'm still at the point where I log on on Thursdays and I'm like, is it there yet? Is it? I'm refreshing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I find it exciting. That for me, that is the most 
important thing. So touching base, you don't need to message me, but as long as you mm -hmm. upload the video and I can say, house is still something stupid. Yeah, like yeah. the house is still there. There has been progress and I can go back we to set my an job. and expectation that you know you're going to get a weekly video update during yeah. automation because that's the trickiest time. Once you've ripped your house apart mm -hmm. and took everything out of it and it, all the old kitchen and old bathroom and everything's outside in a skip, your house is worth nothing. Yeah. Zero pounds. Wow. Well, it's worth less, but yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. No, it's worth nothing. Go and try to put a mortgage on it. They'll say value is zero. So being, I'm being a bit flippant, right? But it is essentially mm. worth nothing in a lender's eyes. So that's a twitchy spit for most people. Some people are just dead calm and, and don't really, and some people don't even reply to my emails. Mm. Uh, or Harriet does. I've stopped doing that. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah <laughs> you know, some people write brilliant progress, looks great, fantastic. Have a nice weekend, and sometimes you don't hear anything. And sometimes they're not even watching them. I've got a few clients that will go, do you know what, I'll be honest with you, I haven't been watching them. And um, just, just, <laughs> that not guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got time, I know it's there. But, um, so I know yeah. the things that I going. prefer when people are a bit more like John and they're a bit more engaged yeah. and they want to yeah. ask some questions. And, For me, you know. With the first property, I forget the chap's name, but when he goes around, he says, this is what we have done, this is what's going on next well, he week. he set a standard for that and now we make them all do that. Yeah, good, good. So that mm. would, so I'm still a new landlord and at that point with that property that was going over a little bit, the videos didn't have any yeah. narrative. Yeah. And for me, I thought, well, I would like to know what's going on. Yep. Something as small as next week, this is happening. So I can say mentally, there is progress. Yep. That's all anybody wants, I assume, who's a client. They want progress. Um, and to be kept up to date, because sometimes, yeah. and, and he will say, next week the plastering's happening. Mm -hmm. But next week, you might say, I'm doing this video on Tuesday, and the plasterer can only get here on Thursday because his last job was held up, yeah. whatever it was, but at least you've got the, the update again. Absolutely, that's almost more important than the video, because the video is just mm. walls, ceiling, maybe a yeah. kitchen, yeah, yeah. it's the, it's the narrative that actually gives you the information. It's hard for me to build expectations because some people will go, you told me it would be 12 weeks. I said, no, the target is 12 weeks, mm -hmm. the target. How, you can't rip a house apart, get 10 to 12 different guys in and out of it, different trades, and it all just goes bang, 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 yeah. bang, bang, every time. Every time. It's Sometimes it does. impossible but to yeah. do it every Sometimes time. Sometimes it's quicker, but yeah. you've got to leave a and so you have to key performance indicator. So as long as you, indicator. Yeah, 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 and as long as you're kind of just updating and giving the info each week, yeah. rather than saying, oh God, nothing's happened this week, just say nothing. <laughs> I hope they don't realize that you have it. Yeah. That's just ridiculous yeah. way to be. Yeah. Keep, keep it up to that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So next question I've got is, how has working with us impacted your life? That's a big, it's a terrible question. That, yeah. that deserves a uh, bit. Yeah, yeah. How has it impacted <laughs> my life? Uh, so it hasn't taken any time away from me, if that makes sense. Yeah. So that, the, that's, it, yeah, that's, that's one of the, I, I thought about, exist, I, think. I have friends who, involved in property and they do everything themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think it looks super rewarding and I would love to learn all of those skills. I wouldn't do it because personally, I feel like my time is better used elsewhere. And I think I'd enjoy the things I do more. But the main thing is time because by taking action, I have now got to a point where if I were doing it myself, if I had done it perfectly, which I don't think I would have because nobody would do the first one perfectly. I wouldn't have as many properties as I do now. And really what my goal is, is to get over the peak so it becomes a little bit easier. Where do you think the peak is? I was going to ask you that. I think you're nearly there. I, well, it depends really on what one's ambitions are. That's true. Seven or eight. I think so, so that you start getting your momentum and Correct. keeping your rental money in the business and it tops up I mean, the part that depletes that, that's, 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 that's one peak. Mm. I mean, you, there'll be another one, another one, because yeah. if, if we say it's seven, mm. well, 21 means you've got three things running all at the same time and you're really going, you know, by the time you get to 150, it'll be really good. But you know, <laughs> one, all seriousness, it's tough. It's always tough. It's never easy. That's that's the first thing to remember. Is Nor it, should you know, it be. It has it taught be me patience because yeah. Yeah. I was saying to Jess on the way here, I need to invest in things that are boring because the boring things are the correct mm. things. Yeah. Because if it is exciting, there's volatility, you'll lose your money because the exciting things are not meant to Go build. Go skydiving. That's exciting. You know what? I can't. <clears throat> crossing the quote of the day. I can't remember where it was, I wrote it in my phone. It's, doing something slowly is the fastest way to achieve Yeah, 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 absolutely. I don't know where I heard that. Yeah, kids get that, yeah. it? You know, <laughs> you know. I've never heard it before. I don't know where I, I, I think I was probably had a few drinks. Like, oh, that sounds good. Right, yeah, yeah. Write it down. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. So I like that. Hair, age yeah. three. Yeah. Like in the hair, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, no, it's all seriousness. Uh, clients going through, always, always hard, never easy, 
but once you got to sort of five to seven, maybe eight, and it depends because each house is slightly different, slightly bigger, slightly smaller, more cash flow, little few bumps in the road, some go easy, but yeah, somewhere in those numbers, the refinancer will be getting in uh, in a regular, you, you've got all sorts of people behind you, mortgage broker, solicitor, accountant, you'll be going through the same motions every time. Your rents coming in will be becoming more regular, Mm -hmm. because you know let's say you got one boiler that breaks down and you go in one house that's yeah. a big lump mm -hmm. when you've got five houses and one boiler breaks down because it, it, it happens very very infrequently but if it happens on number one then that's a big, you know, big 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 chunk you can average it out and it starts not to take the knocks True. but the main thing is is the, is the cash flow profit coming in every house you buy the new one mm -hmm. the cash you leave behind you won't take all your cash out you'll leave a bit of it in it's been replenished by six months worth of you know, five six seven eight times rent profits yeah so that, that's that's why you get over the hump mm -hmm. after a sort of six seven eight uh -huh. months yeah. There's, there's pros and cons to the whole boring side of things because it's so much slower than I first anticipated. In the same way when you just keep investing, most of your cash flow is in the final project because it's always ongoing. And you have this feeling where you say, okay, I want to stop because by stopping, I'll realize some of the, it's a tangible thing. Yeah. You want to say, okay, in the bank, that's coming in. But you also know on the other side of the coin that you're taking away your momentum. Your inertia is just yeah. crumbling and to get the ball rolling again you're back at start the phase one if and you you're yes yeah, sorry I was gonna say you'll never lose that feeling I always feel broke in, my, in that account yeah in my property account it always it feels never ends <laughs> when you stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're absolutely right. When you stop, <clears throat> it'll all come in. It's like, well, there you go. Um, all the refinances come in, all the rental profits can keep flushing in. It's like, oh, it keeps going up and go. Then when you buy a house, yeah. you go back down again. That's, I, I like that feeling and all, all the time I'm growing. When you stop growing, then yeah. that's, that's, that's not a good to place to be. When, yeah. you, when, you, when you want to realize it, when you can realize it, yeah. Uh, they get to a point when the float is going up and you could take some out on a monthly basis uh -huh. you wouldn't even notice it I might just about have got to that point but that's only it's not a um, that's what the point when I've been able to do it is the point I've chosen I could have chosen yeah. to do it 10 years ago but I, I want to be I've got an ambition of a silly number of houses your snowball will be smaller Correct. The snowball will yeah. be smaller. Socrates. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so what are you doing next? What's next? Regarding property. So I'm at the point now where I was just saying that I've cancelled all of my subscriptions to magazines, avoid all of the noise, decision has been made. This is it now, you know, yeah. for this side of things. So I have other businesses where my time and energy will go and property for me is the boring. It's just, it needs to be boring. So I, it's so boring. I forget about it, but it's there. <laughs> I want to get it to the point where it is self-sustaining. I don't know where the, it's a very bespoke thing knowing where your hill is. Yeah. Um, my ambition does not end ever, which is well, you're, potentially you're, a curse, but I, yeah, for property, it just needs to keep being self-sustained and I just ignore everything because you can look at the news, FUD, fear, uncertainty, doubt. That's how they get their clicks, their views. Mm -hmm. They should create a news channel that's purely positive and nobody would watch it. Oh, they did and nobody watched it. Yeah, Absolutely. nobody would. Uh, and, and my wife, she's subscribed to a, it's, I don't know, good news something or something or other. It's an email subscription. No bugger looks at it. Yeah. Literally, nobody subscribes to that. Good. You have to nobody wants to. Nobody wants and it. The only thing we're victims to too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I click on the bad things because yeah. that is what piques my interest. Mm. Our our thumbnails have always going to be negative. We know that. Otherwise, nobody looks at it. <laughs> yeah. If we do a, yeah. uh, we did a whole series on how landlords be happy. Nobody watched it. They didn't yeah. want to be happy. They just wanted to see. I did. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but yeah, they want to know. We, we have to identify find the thing that's making you miserable and then if you ignore it you'll be happy but we ha in order to get you to watch it we have to say are you miserable yeah it's crazy it's, it's, it's human, human nature. nature i like the fact that you um are being focused about things i unsubscribing to stuff and and and, and what's well, done now I've, I've read something this was um, years ago now where in your 20s you know, take it all in read everything do everything but towards the end of your 20s into your 30s you, you only need five books just keep re reading yeah same, yeah i've got books over and over, yeah. over again because you know what they are you know what it says like, that's a universal lesson and th there's nothing else to learn yeah. anything else will just be a rehashed version of that don't waste your time just focus on doing that so i think you did that. yeah anybody who knows me knows i love reading and i could tell you what those five books are yeah i've got the bookshelves at home and there's just a top shelf it's all in there what are they five books oh meditations by marcus aurelius yeah the shortness of life by seneca yeah cliche rich dad poor dad but yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, basics yeah. are in there they're in there and another terrible title but felix dennis how to get rich stupid title but it's a great you book. Then, yeah, 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 I've got his, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got a great guy. Yeah. Number five, I would go with another cliche book, Think and Grow Rich, because it's the foundational stuff that 
you build upon, obviously. You got four out of my five. <laughs> yeah, really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. I think I've, I probably haven't got a ten. I've probably got a ten, but I'll, I might do that on another video later. Then. Yeah. But yeah, absolutely. That's it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They're the only ones you need to. Um, yeah. Right. Any other things you want to add? Nothing from me. Do we get? Do we get to thank John for coming. Uh, yeah. Hey John. Thank you guys, and thanks awesome. for everything. Cheers. Thanks very much. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye.